Sita Ben was talking about Vasnavarut Dadra first 16. So Hari Prasad Swamiji is saying that Dadra first 16 and first 18 are together. First 16 is for the inner side of ourself. And first 18 is for the gross senses of ourself. So our Disha Ben was selected next. So she came and said that if I have any suggestion for the Vasnamrut. So I said, well, when we talk about first 16, Kakaji was saying that is for Khatmurat. When we do the foundation ceremony for a big building, that is that Vasnamrut of the Khatmurat. And then when the building is built, that is the Vasnamrut for Gadra first 18. So both Vasnamruts are very important and they have a lot of deep meaning and a lot of deep stories also. So, Swaminar Bhagavan came down on this earth for a very divine purpose. Bhagavan Iyagar Aprithvi Par Padharya Brahmarup Thay Na Parabrahm Ni Bhakti Karva No Rasto Batava Made Jeeva Nu Atyanti Kalyan Karva Made To liberate the souls to the highest possible level. And our scriptures, other deities in the past, they had done a lot of road work, a lot of work for that, so that it was not totally new. The roadways were kind of, you know, built. And Swaminarayan Bhagavan created a new highway for the journey to Akshardham. And in this Vachnamrut, Dadra verse 18, Swaminar Bhagavan is giving a lot of good guidance. So I will try to read portion of that. I think it's a long Vachnamrut. So I will try to read as much as we can, maybe up to another 45 minutes or so, you know, then we would have some other, you know, people say some other things also today. And tomorrow is also 1st of April, and we are celebrating Ram Naomi and Hari Jayanti. And also in Hawaii, they are going to celebrate Yogini Ben's birthday tomorrow, that today, Pintu by mentioned about you giving best birthday also. Maybe before going to this Vajnamrut, let me say a few words for Yogini Ben on her birthday. Yogini Ben has lived a very dedicated life in India, in Bombay, and in Tardev and Pawai. And she became a sadhu in the family of Mahendra Bapu. Almost all brothers and sisters became sadhus, except one brother, Bhupendra Bhai. Then he got married and he had a son that we know, Milan Bhai, you know. And then they have a daughter also now. So, but other than all the other brothers and sisters, they joined this divine plan of Yogi Bapa and Kakaji. So, two sisters, you know, Bharti Ben and Yogini Ben, both became a dedicated sadhigas. Bharti Ben joined in Gunati Jyot, and she was under the guruship of our Devi Ben. And she was doing a lot of uh, Patrika related and other activities, you know, while she was there. She passed away a few years ago. 
and then Yogini Ben was in Bombay. And under Kakaji's guidance, there were other Benos, they were also taking this roadway to become sadhu. And Kakaji gave Yogini Ben the role of leadership. Yogini Ben was very, you know, emotional personality. And she would pray for all these devotees and all these Benos and others for their good being. And she would do a lot of mada and other things also. But in 1978-79, Kakaji wanted to start activities in Pawai area. And our Pawai land was barren land, you know. It was very difficult to even go to the land we call Bagicho, you know, at that time, the garden. But it was so difficult to go through the rocky roadways there. Still, before any other activities happened, Kakaji had created a group of sisters to start the activities in Pawai first. They had bought an apartment there, Prashant apartment. You know. And Mahendra Bapu was working at that time, so he had money. So he supported the cost for buying the, the building there, you know. And it was, I think, under his name also, you know. So there, the banos were shifted. You can understand, you know, it's like a jungle that when ladies, all these banos were shifted there, and the other activities were happening in Tardev, which is the center part of Bombay. But on Kakaji saying, they all went there, moved there, and they started their sadhana there. And Kakaji had a vision, you know. Today, Pawai is a, is a growing, you know, area. And by the prayers of Yogiji Maharaj and Kakaji and all Munati Swarup, whole Pawai area has flourished, you know. But Yogini Ben was in the foundation to start with these activities in Pawai area. And there are some Yogini Ben's personal incidences, which is in the Divine Touch or Jevame Nirkhyare, you know. Jevame Nirkhyare is any other Yogini Ben na prasango bhi se. And I Yogini Ben hai saras badaiva prasango bhi kaya se. I am ek prasang evo bhi se ke Yogini Ben she was feeling very lonely, very remote, and she was having tears in her eyes, you know. And then Kakaji from Tardev called her. The phone rang, but they had no courage to pick up the phone. Finally, she picked up the phone. And then Kakaji answered the phone, saying that I'm coming, I'm bringing Shiro and other food for you, the you know, halwa other food for you, and I will be there and giving you the discourses and other things, you know. So Yogini Ben thought that my prayer has been heard, you know, and Kakaji is coming and, you know, fulfilling my wishes, you know. And there are other incidences also, you know. But even in her last days, when she was not feeling well, she was always praying for all these other banos and other people, you know, to have the satsang in the ladies strong, you know. And after Yogini Ben's passing away, that happened when Bharat Bhai, who was in America, then last year, when, or year before, I think, 2015, that Bharat Bhai was in America on a trip. We were in California at that time. And that's when the news came, you know, that Yogini Ben had passed away. But before leaving, Bharat Bhai had also said, you know, that we are praying that you don't suffer a lot. And Yogini Ben said that, I know that I'm not going to see you again. And that's what had happened, you know. So she was very, you know, devoted in our foundation. And Madhuri Ben is now given the leadership 
of the banos in Pawai, our mandir. And Madhuri Ben has come here also. Madhuri Ben is very quiet and very low profile, but she does a lot of prayers, just like Yogini Ben, and a lot of, you know, uh, dhun for the other devotees and banos there. So, and uh, Madhu, uh, Madhuri Ben also uh, sings a lot of nice songs also, you know. So, now the flame is continuous, you know, but remembering Yogini Ben today on her birthday on the 31st of March. Bharat Bhai's birthday is 31st of January. So they are both on 31st, you know, and two months apart, you know. But we do remember and we do pray for Yogini Ben's, you know, birthday that she is back in our satsang and she is really, you know, uh, doing a lot of seva in that way. So we are very happy, you know, to talk about her on her birthday. So with that, and we have so many other birthdays, you know, our Bhavik Bhai. Uh, I don't know, last Friday, was Bhavik Bhai here last Friday? Hatta, right? We had introduced Bhavik Bhai, right? And Bhavik Bhai is also going to be doing a lot of Mahapuja and Satsang activities and helping us in many different ways. He's very much expert in computers, you know, and our Vijay Bhai and Bhavik Bhai are also now working together, you know, on our, this programs here. And Pintu Bhai and our Surat Bhai and others are also going to work together. Our Sapan Bhai also is, you know, providing a lot of supports. So, we are having a good addition to our satsang from India. And Bhavik Bhai, we want to make sure that he is happy here and he is remembering, you know, the people there by WhatsApp and other things, FaceTime. But we want to make sure that he doesn't feel like he is homesick. We all know that when we came first time to America or any foreign country, we miss our place, you know, we miss our, our many years of staying in the India, our, our towns. So we want to just make him cheerful and happy, you know, as much as we can. And Bija Badana bhi amara, you know, Ketan Bhaina family na to April mein namaj, April shower se hai, <laughs> lot of birthdays hai. Amari diya, amar home, and a grandma, and chathu kano? Thran, Thran Janna, Saras, Saras. Ajay Saras, Amara Vibhuti Ben Biyavya. We are very happy to see you, Beta. And if you like it, keep coming more, huh? Right. And if you don't come, you know, then we'll find out what you did not like, so maybe we can change. <laughs> Saras. So, on this Vachanamur today, Swamdhan Bhagavan is up about three hours before the sunrise. And normally in India, sunrise is considered six o'clock. But our Disha Ben has done a good research and she looked into maybe Google or whatever to find out the sunrise on December 8th and it is seven o'clock. So three hours before seven o'clock is like four o'clock, you know, in the morning. Swaminar Bhagavan is going to the places where the saints are sleeping, or they are resting, you know. And if you consider six o'clock time, according to normal calendar, then it is three o'clock in the morning that Swaminar Bhagavan has gone there, you know. So he wanted to deliver a special important message, you know to Santo, you know. And the message is, you know, that Swaminar Bhagavan told 
the leader saints to have all other saints come. Eh? And some of them were not up, so they woke up and they came with half closed eyes or whatever, you know. <laughs> and then Swaminarayan Bhagavan did not say anything. For a while he kept quiet. And then he is opening up the statement, you know, that says, I am telling one thing, please listen. Then Swaminarayan Bhagavan says, in my mind, I feel like not telling. But on the other hand, I consider you mine. So that's why I feel like that I should tell you. But now, what Swaminarayan Bhagavan says, that to liberate from the bondage of the cycle of birth and death, to liberate and become a mukta by listening this discourse that I'm telling you today. So, he says, that is the truth that he tej mukta thai che. The one who follows what I'm telling you will only become the liberated soul. Now, there is a definition of liberated soul that whoever is elevated from whatever the previous consciousness to a next higher consciousness is considered liberated soul. But that is not the highest level. Somebody can elevate by having some extraordinary powers and consider himself as a liberated soul. But that kind of person get also tangled into the forces of Maya and can be pulled down, you know, or can be, you know, thrown out. But what Swaminarayan Bhagavan is considering a liberated soul is the ultimately highest level of liberated soul, who is the Mukta of Akshardham. So, in that category, Swaminarayan Bhagavan is saying that even after listening all these discourses of the scriptures, Bhagavan says, Ane tevina to char ved, four vedas, shat shastra, six darshan shastra, eighteen puran, and mahabharat, adik ityas, tene banave karine, tatha tena earthne janave karine, atva tene shravane karine par mukta thaine. These are the powerful educational books. Just like if somebody who can read the medical journals and all medical books and claim that I have read, I have understood, and I can apply my medical knowledge to a patient. But nobody will go to that doctor's place, you know, unless he has a practical experience until that doctor has a degree and worked under so many years to make sure that he has a confidence. We have a lot of time that if you have a doctor who has 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 a doctor Successful, not hai. M, atla shastra, ved, puran, badu, bhanya hoi. Pern, a technique jo na sikhya hoi, je bhagwan batava magesh. To, mukta na kya hoi. Am biji drashti ye to atlu shastra bhanya la hoi, bada mukta kya hoi hai. Yanu ganu respect atyar sudhi, apna hindu dharm ni andar leva ilu shi. Leva bada ghana, acharyo ne, bija, Santo ne leader ne bhi maan apel ushe, jagya apel ishe. But any under real purity kitli ishe, ye to Bhagavan at jane. Only God will know how much the inner side of that person is elevated. And to elevate that inner side, 
Bhagwan is starting from the outer side on this Vaishnambur. And then, Samdhan Bhagwan has already said, you know, two Vaishnambur before, the Vaishnambur for the inner journey, you know. So, it looks like, you know, Swaminarayan Bhagavan had, you know, made assumption that by talking on the Gadra first 16, he had assumed that Gadra 18 must have been mastered by the, all the saints. But in two days, a creation was there, something was, something happened there, and that is why Swaminarayan Bhagavan has to uh, say this was number, you know. And I have mentioned that in the past, you know, so I don't want to go and repeat that, you know. So, Swaminarayan Bhagavan is saying that whatever exterior activities are there, whatever exterior disturbances or the achievements are there, Bahar to gametetli upadi hoi, पर तेनो जो मन में संकल्प न होए तो तेनो हमारे खरखरो नहीं सो आउटसाइड इफ देयर आर डिस्टरबेंसेस यू हैव बिकम साधु एंड इट इज अ होल न्यू चैप्टर एंड देयर हैव बीन डिस्टरबेंसेस फ्रॉम आउटसाइडर फ्रॉम आउटसाइड बट इन योर माइंड इफ यू आर मास्टर्ड विद द वचनाप्रद गढ़ा फॉर 16 then it's okay. There's no problem. Ane antar mo jo ranch jetlo padarth no gaad thai, to te no tiyak kariye te are nirat thai, e wo amaro sobao chhe. Bhagwan is giving example of himself, but it is really meant for the all the sadhus, you know. That this is how you have to first decide or analyze where you are. इतने कैसे फरी थी बाहर तो गम्मे तेतले उपाधि होए पर तेनो जो मनमा संकल्प ना होए तो तेनो हमारे खर खरो नहीं अने अंतर में जो रंच जेटलो पदार्थ नो गाड़ था है तो तेनो त्याग करिए त्यारे निरात था है ये वो हमारो स्वभाव चे दिस इज माय स्टाइल भगवान सेज माटे हमें रदे मो विचार करियो सो नाउ so what did I think? Bhagavan na bhakta na radaimo vikshep thai chhe. Tenu karan shu chhe. The devotee of God who has decided living on this very difficult challenging roadway to become a sadhu. Then why there is a disturbance? Why there is a problem? Why there is a sidetrack? Tenu shu karan chhe. पची भगवान कैसे मन, बुद्धि, चीत, अहंकार, जो इनर साइड्स, ऐनी सामू जो यू, तो त्यों ये अंतःकरण पर उद्वेगनु कारण न थी, सो ऑल दिस इनर साइड्स, समझना भगवान से जाए, एग्जामिन्ड, एंड दे आर नॉट दी रियल कल्प्रेट, दे आर नॉट दी रियल स्टार्टर ऑफ दी प्रॉब्लम मन बुद्धि चिता हंकार ये उद्वेगनु कारण नथी अंतह करण मतो भगवान् ना स्वरूप ना निश्चय नु बढ़ अथवा आत्मज्ञान नु बढ़ तैने योगे करी ने अंतह करण ने गाफलता रहे छे जे भगवान् मरे आचे ते हवे कहीं करवो रहियो नथी ये वो गाफल पन उरे छे एटलो जंतह करण नो वाक छे सो भगवान् इस सेइंग दैट इन दी इन there is a strong faith, strong conviction of the God's form. Bhagavan na swarup nu na nishchai nu bad. That is one. And second one is atma jnana nu bad. One is the outside and one is within. Ek Bhagavan na nishchai nu bad chai. Sadhu santo mate bhi avad chai ke emne भगवान मरे आज है ना निश्चय नू बढ़ से अने बीजो हमने पोतानु आत्मज्ञान बीच है क्यों आत्मा जो दिस टू आर वेरी पावरफुल एंटिटीज एंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट वी कैन बी लिटिल केयरलेस 
just like if a person who has driven for 20, 30 years in America, and now he says that I have a good driving experience, right? But then what, he, what happens if he goes to India and driving the car in India? It would be challenge, it would be different. So he cannot go with that confidence that since I have driven here for many years in America, I can drive in India without any you know, uh, accident or any you know, small bumper touching or hitting, you know. So they call fender bender, right? <laughs> the bending of fender. <laughs> so, same way Bhagavan is saying that since some of you saints have a strong faith, nishchay, about God, and you have strong conviction of yourself within you, that you are Atma, and that is why you may have, maybe, some overconfidence in this world and in this Maya. And in this world, there is a lot of confidence in this world. There is a lot of confidence in this world. So, Bhagavan is saying that that is also not a want, that is not a needed thing. We have to be even very extra careful. Now, Bhagavan is saying that next level is not going to be. And if you are going to be in this world, Jnana Indriyo no che. See, there are ten senses in our body. Five, the knowledge senses, and five, the action senses. Paanch Jnana Indriyo che, and paanch Karma Indriyo che. Any other paanch Jnana Indriyo che, and they are all around on our head. They are all located on our head, you know, very close to the brain. And એ પાંચ જ્ઞાને ઇન્દ્રિયોમાંથી જ પ્રોબ્લેમ ઊભા થાય છે એનો જ વાંક છે બાકીની બીજી કર્મ ઇન્દ્રિયો છે પણ એ એમના નોકરો છે જ્ઞાને ઇન્દ્રિય ઓર્ડર કરે તો જ કર્મ ઇન્દ્રિય કામ કરે પણ જ્ઞાને ઇન્દ્રિય જો પ્યોરિફાય થઈ હોય જ્ઞાને ઇન્દ્રિય જો મેચ્યોર થઈ હોય તો પ્રોબ્લેમ થવાના ચાન્સ બહુ ઓછા છે એ પાંચ જ્ઞાને ઇન્દ્રિયોનો હવે ભગવાન ડિટેલમાં explanation of this. Jajo vaak to paanch jnane indriyo no ch. And I will go on one sense and then maybe you can, you know, read and understand the other four senses. But if you have any questions, then I will be happy to, you know, go into more detail later on or even today, you know. Teni vikti kaiye chye je. A je jeev chye તે નાના પ્રકારના ભોજન જમે છે સો ગોડ ઇઝ સ્ટાર્ટિંગ ફ્રોમ ધી ફર્સ્ટ ટેસ્ટ બર્ડ ઓર ધી ટંગ સેન્સ નાવ ધી ટંગ ઇઝ ઓલ્સો વેરી યુનિક ઓર્ગન ટંગ ડઝ નોટ હેવ એ બોન બટ ઇટ કેન બ્રેક અવર બોન્સ બાય નોટ સ્પીકિંગ પ્રોપરલી યુ નો ઇફ વી don't say right thing, you know, we can get into trouble and we can have a big problem, you know, our bones can be broken. The second thing is, tongue is both indriya. It is karma indriya and jnana indriya. That is very unique. Even tongue is the third, the Sparsh Indriya also, the touch Indriya also. So, out of the ten senses, this tongue has three, you know, major uh, attributes. It, it has three major uh, control, you know, of the senses. So, Swaminar Bhagavan is starting with the testing of the tongue, you know, sense in the ear, you know. And Swaminar Bhagavan is saying that the soul eats 
varieties of foods and every food has varieties of tastes and every food has varieties of qualities and when that food is eaten the qualities of the food eaten from outside goes inside into the mind and the other faculty of the inner self so bhagwan ke che ke bhojan bhojan pratye juda juda swad che ane juda juda gun che te bhojan ne jare jame che tyare te gun antah karan mo tatha sharir mo pravarte che it propagates in the whole body also and in the inner body also you know and i was just thinking today you know that we had varieties of items today you know downstairs you know samosa ta ane bije badi be item hoti right shiro saag badu right so when you see i am sure you know you get watery mouth you know by looking at samosa right <laughs> samosa joiye to mada mo pani chute jo no કારણ કે આપણે એને એની સાથે એવું પ્રોગ્રામિંગ કરેલું છે વી હેવ પ્રોગ્રામ દેટ વે યુ નો બટ સમ ઇયર્સ અગો આઈ રેડ એન આર્ટિકલ ઇન એફડીએ વેબસાઇટ દેટ એની ડીપ ફ્રાઈડ ફૂડ વિથ સ્ટાર્ચ ડીપ ફ્રાઈડ સ્ટાર્ચ ફૂડ creates a cancer causing chemical into the that food you know for example potatoes you know the french fries is fried into higher temperature mcdonald and burger king and all and fda said that it has very high level of adaldehyde or something like that you know the cancer causing chemical you know so they say that if you eat one pack of french fry today you should not eat for a whole month whole month your body will try to throw it out to you know filter it out all this poisons and chemicals you know from that french fries and many years ago i was you know looking at people they don't have any bad habits of smoking or drinking or eating meat and why they get cancer also you know so some of the answers i knew from the environment like you know from the air from the water but this one now substantiates from the food also you know and it says that those types of foods we should try to avoid you know donuts they are bad you know they are cooked into 600 degrees fahrenheit and we should not eat any food which is cooked more than 150 degrees fahrenheit sorry not 100 200 uh, 350 degrees fahrenheit or 150 degrees centigrade you know so anything cooked over 350 degrees fahrenheit creates this cancer causing chemicals into the food so when i look at samosa then i the insight of tells me that how much cancer causing chemicals are there you know <laughs> so what i do is if i have to eat i take out the outer layer you know the inside potatoes or whatever that i eat if i have to you know eat some places you know where i want to pay respect you know and i want to eat you know i don't like to throw away things you know i don't like to throw away even the outer shell you know but this is the compromise i do when i eat kachori or samosa or batakha vada or things like that because that is the program that i have created now you know and i have stopped eating you know even the potato chips or other things also you know what swamnarayan bhagwan is saying here you know that whatever we eat there is an effect of that 
on our body and on our mind. The French fry would not have a negative impact like garlic and onion, Swami Bhagavan says, would have. But this is something, you know, I'm just saying every food that we look, how do we relate that, you know? The second thing is that even if we want to eat something, we want to offer to God first and make it a prasad and then eat. And eat in a limit. Eat in a proper amount, you know. Don't overeat. Now, when we were young, we used to make andavo, you know. And the top layer of andavo would be black. And the bottom layer of andavo would be black also. And we would be competing to have that, you know. But when I read this, that has the most amount of this chemicals, you know, cancer-causing chemicals. And something interesting, prune juice that I was watching the website, they have thousands of items, you know, that they have, uh, you know, report of how many cancer-causing chemicals amount, you know, in each item uh, this process and other foods have. So prune juice, I would never have thought that why prune juice would have high amount of cancer-causing chemicals. Because prunes are natural product, you know. So then I inquired, you know. And the answer was that prunes were dried into high temperature ovens. And that is why their color is dark black. We may have seen, you know, those prunes. They are in black colors. They have been processed to have the long life, you know. But in that process, this cancer-causing chemicals have been created. So when they make the prune juice, from those dried prunes, that's when the problem is. The fresh prunes, they are very healthy, you know. And their color is also not dark, you know. So those were the, you know, things that I learned, you know, I found out, you know. Well, that does not guarantee that I will not have cancer, you know. Because environment, air, water, and other food, all this time we have eaten, you know, could have an impact on that, you know. But less we eat those kind of things, better off we could be, you know. That is the message Bhagwan is also giving. So, Bhagwan is saying that bhojan bhojan pratyaya juda juda swad chhe, ane juda juda gun chhe. Te bhojan ne jare jame chhe, tyare te gun antah karan ma, tatha sharir ma pravarte chhe. Ane jo lilagar bhang piwe, now God is saying about intoxicant, like a liquor or something of that type, you know, during the time in India. Lilagar bhang. Lilagar bhang piwe, ane prabhu no bhakta hoi, topan lilagar bhang ne cafe karine, vartmani khabar reni. If a person drinks the liquor, then no matter how elevated devotee he is, the body will react and he would be under the intoxication. Tem, Anand prakar na ahar chhe, tena gun pan, lilagar bhang ni pethej anand prakar na chhe. So, there are so many varieties of food that would create this problem in eating the food. And Bhagavan is saying, they are innumerable. Now, in this Vachnamrut, the message that Swami Bhagavan is giving to the saints is that you have to practice three things, you know, to master your stage of saintliness. And those three things are explained in the Vachnamrut Gadra, middle 33. So, in middle 33, the first one is to control the mind by performing the nine types of devotion. Nauda Bhakti, and the mind ne jo apne busy rakhiye, to apna gadra pratham sod paku thai. Gadra first 16 will be mastered. Nauda Bhakti thi. Ane second item Swamnar Bhagwan has said 
is this item that pran ne control mo rakhvano to control the pran the food is essential part if food is eaten wrongfully then our pran will be misbehaving you know and for that samnar bhagwan has given the guidance to make sure that how the food will be you know eaten and samnar bhagwan is referring to bhagavad gita also in there you know that lord krishna has said you know that yukta ahara viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmanu yukta swapna avabodhasya yogo bhavati dukha so the meaning of that that proper eating proper going around traveling or or you know journey you know then proper actions in our daily life and proper sleeping creates the yoga without major problems if somebody wants to practice on yoga these are the four things that lord krishna has said in bhagavad gita you know so swamnar bhagwan is referring to that what is the proper eating out of the four first one what is the proper eating so then in the 17th chapter or the 18th chapter some uh, lord krishna has given the type of sattva guni ahar the pure food you no know. then there is a rajoguni ahar and then there is a tamoguni ahar you no know. so one who is eating the sattva guni ahar will be then under the influence of purity so that is also explained in bhagavad gita so eating food of a quality is one thing but now the quantity also makes difference you know that one should not overeat and we always feel repented after overeating when we are on the table we forget you know and our eyes are bigger than our mouth you know we order lot more than what we can eat and two things happen you know by ordering more you know we overeat and we also waste you know we throw it away you know i was sitting i was sitting today you know downstairs and devotees you know they were going to empty the dishes into that garbage can you know and then they were putting the empty dishes in stack so we don't have a big you know garbage can size you know but almost everybody was going there and emptying there you know that means that we have taken a little bit more we have wasted a little bit of food you know our dish should be clean you know we should take only what we should eat now accepted you know that there are some spices like marcha vagarna marcha and other things that it's not suitable to us that we can discard you know but other than that you know we should clean up and finish our dish properly you know i travel you know all over in our different satsang centers and in the sahib's group there is one saint who comes from the outside group you know from shivanand swami you know adhyat adhyatmanand swami and him and i sit down on the same dining place in india and even let me start before even sitting down on the table you know this time i was with him and saheb has provided a tank of water to wash our hands before we eat so he was behind me but respectfully i told him to be ahead of me you know so he came and he started washing his hands he opened up the faucet barely open 
and he was washing his hands. So I thought that maybe I should help him. <laughs> so I opened up full faucet, and he told me, he said, no, 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 don't do that. No. Then he put it back to the small amount. And then he washed his hands, you know. But that gave me the message, you know. He is conserving water. Even in washing hands, he is conserving water. The price is time. That in order to clean the hands in five seconds, it may take 15 seconds or 20 seconds. But he is conserving the water. From that I learned also that I always now, not only brushing the teeth, open the faucet only when I was brushing. That I used to do for many, many, you know, years or you no. Know. But now I am opening up very small amount and using it very wisely. I know this country has abundance of resources, but I don't want to be the culprit to ruin these resources for our future generation. We all should learn that, you know. We all should respect that. Now, water and air are the prime resources, but nature is very clever, and it has given the recycling and other thing of water and air that we naturally are not going to run out of it that quickly, you know. I hope that in another several thousand years, you know, we will not run out, you know. Because even the water we have wasted, it goes to the ocean, forms the clouds, come back and brings the clear water, you know. So that water is not lost, you know. Air is not lost, you know. But how about the petrol and diesel? That resource is very dear to all human beings, you know. And we should always be wise when we drive the car also. We should make sure that we have enough people in our car so we are saving one or two cars ride, you know. We should ride together if possible. And then I have learned, you know, over the years that the optimum speed to have the Maximum mileage is 45 miles per hour, even on highways. And I know our car people, you know, where I drive, you know, our Aruna Ben or NG Ben or me, you know. Chandrakan uncle has been doing that for many years. <laughs> In these 70s and 80s and 90s, you know, when Chandrakan uncle will be coming and he would be, he would have left about 10 minutes, you know, before us. And then I would have been going at 95 or 85, you know. And I would see his car, you know. And then I would wave hand, you know. And then I would say, you know, that eh, our very slow movers are, you know. Eh? Hello, turtle, hoy, na? turtle speed, you know. Eh? But now I have become a turtle speed, you know that even on highway, you know, by driving at 45 mile speed from 260 miles per fill-up of 20 gallons tank, which is an average of 13 miles per gallon, you know. Acura that I first, Pintu Bai gave me there, and I, it had a gadgets, you know, all those miles and, you know, good driving and bad driving, you know, all that. So I started experimenting. That was like from 2010, maybe? Nine, 2005, no? 2000, from 2005, I have experimented this. And from 260 miles per fill-up of 120-gallon tank, if I drive at 45 miles speed, it will give me 430 miles. From 230 to 430, 200 more miles every tank I get extra. That is the benefit of saving the fuel. 
Not only that, but the brakes that I used to repair, replace at 40,000 miles, you know. Normally, you may have also experienced, you know, around 40,000, between 20 to 40 or 50, 60,000 miles on a brand new car, you, you need a new brakes, right? This car that I had Acura, when we experimented, instead of 40,000, it lasted up to about 70 or 80,000 miles that we did not replace brakes, you know. So we saved on that. Third thing were tires, you know, that tires would last maybe 50 to 70,000 miles, you know. These tires that we had were good for up to 110, 120,000 miles. So saving on that. And the most important thing is that if you are driving at the speed of 45 miles, and if anything happens, we don't want to have happen, but if anything happens, you have better control. You have better handle on your speed. I know, but your habit is not going to change, you know. And I'm not saying that <laughs> you will do it tomorrow, but I'm putting this thought, okay, that petroleum and gasoline is a great resource, and that is lost, you know. Once it is used, it is gone. We are not going to have recycling of petroleum, you know. We will have to find new resources other than that, you know, wind or solar energy or other energy, you know. But if we run out before that, then it would be bad on our coming generation, you know. So this is just sidetrack, you know, just what I was saying that Swaminarayan Bhagavan gave this message of purifying ourselves by three different methods, you know. First method was to have the inner mind control by the Nauda Bhakti. Second one is to have proper food eating and food eating habits by controlling the prana. And the third thing is by following the niyams. Whatever niyams that Swaminarayan Bhagavan has given or Gunadi Satpurush has given, if we follow those niyams, then we will be in proper control, you know. So these are the three messages that Swaminarayan Bhagavan was narrating in this Vajtamrata also. I think time is already 9.30. So maybe I would have somebody else say more on this Vajtamrata maybe, or maybe, you know, something else, so that we have some little more varieties. So... वो करिए हमारा भाविक भाई ने पहला कहिए आवे बात करे थोड़ी तीन शाम पे बता नाविन जय समदान तो करो भाई तुम्हारी बर्थडे है कल शेठ पासे आशीर्वाद मांगवाना हो आज ऊपर आओ बड़ा लो आशे